Hello and welcome to Housing and Economic Development. I'm Michael Shea, the host of this program on Arlington Independent Media. Today we're going to talk about Crystal City, an important part of the economic development scene in Arlington County. And we're joined by Angela Fox, who's the president and CEO of the Crystal City Business Improvement District, or as most people would call it, the BID. Okay. Angela, thanks for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. So, Angela, give us some background. What's, how did Crystal City BID get started and what... Tell us about the organization. Sure. So um, the Crystal City bid was formed in response to BRAC, Base Realignment and Closure right. legislation, which passed um, in 2005. That was a response to 9-11, basically that DOD um, had to have certain restrictions around buildings. And when you had an infrastructure like Crystal City, um, you could no longer you know, take the building and move it 80 feet from the street for to, to meet right. some of these new rules. Um, so basically, Crystal City, which was um, the major economic engine for Arlington County, faced a crisis. Um, and that crisis was 30,000, uh, there are 30,000 jobs in Crystal City, 17,000 of them were going to have to move out. Um, at that point, one of the companies had purchased a lot of the real estate in Crystal City and had done a great um, renovation. They added all these great new restaurants and streets and really focused on the street tail of, of Crystal City um, and making the streets two-way. And then suddenly this announcement came. So they were looking at an investment, an issue, massive vacancies. Um, so they went to the county who um, partnered together. There was a BRAC task force that mm -hmm. was formed. Um, and that task force basically said you needed two things for Crystal City. One, you need an economic oriented development plan. And two, you needed a marketing group. Um, because Crystal City had perception issues. A lot had changed, but people still sort of had that right. perception of the old Crystal City. Uh, so they formed a bid. They went together with the county um, to and all of the other property owners in Crystal City to form what is a, known as a business improvement district. And basically what bids do um, is that they solve economic or other issues in an area. Um, there's a specific boundary that's drawn and inside that boundary the commercial property owners agree to pay an additional tax in order to offer a certain level of service that the county not, cannot necessarily accommodate. Right. Um, we don't do services in a bid that the county does and the county doesn't do services that the bid does, but it's sort of a higher level um, to, to really solve a problem. In downtown in D.C., um, the original bid was really focused on clean and safe um, because one of their economic issues was that people didn't come there to go to dinner or to go to shows or to go to the Verizon Center because it didn't exist at the time because it wasn't considered a very safe or clean area. So that bid, those businesses got together to solve that problem. In Crystal City, we did not have a clean and safe issue. It was a, it's a beautiful, very safe neighborhood. It's one of the reasons I moved here in 1991 out of college. Um, but they certainly had the image issue. So the, the Crystal City bid, um, our entire mission is to transform the, people, the way people see, perceive, and experience Crystal City. We like to say, give it a soul. In terms of my getting involved with the bid, right? Let's talk about that. Sure. Um, so, but no, just to, did you do you live in Crystal City? You I, moved so to Crystal I, City. Where'd you move? When I first uh, graduated high school, or uh, and um, excuse me, back up. I graduated college in Atlanta. I studied electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. Okay. So I came to work in the D.C. area for Verizon. Um, I flew into National Airport. I stayed at the Crystal Gateway Marriott, and I moved into a Charles Smith apartment building on Columbia Pike. Okay. Um, a couple years later, I moved into a home, um, which is in the neighborhood adjacent to uh, Crystal City. Okay. Right. So I knew the neighborhood inside and out. It had nothing to do with what I did on a daily basis, um, but I remember the old Crystal City. I remember the one-way streets. I remember the lack of sidewalks and no real restaurants or anything like that. Um, but it was very functional, very convenient. I mean, there isn't another neighborhood in the world that has an airport that you can walk to. Right. And a lot of times when I bike into Crystal City in the morning, I'll pass a pilot. <laughs> so <laughs> people actually do it. Um, so I had great at, um, assets, great infrastructure, but just not, you know, really a place you'd hang out. But right. it was designed to be the place that had great infrastructure, great um, economic benefit, great value, but not really, I mean, they didn't want a, a lot of people hanging out, you know, but we've since changed the mentality. I mean, they, they, they had these inside tunnels, you know, that Crystal City became known for the underground, right. um, sort of a Jetson-like mentality, the car is king, you know, but now neighborhoods, you know, they sort of thrive by great restaurants and the ability to walk right. around, so. I, I know what you mean, because I can remember years ago, it wasn't a place you know, so you would go, but that's where your parents stayed at a hotel when they flew in to see you, because that's what, sure. it was beautiful for them. Sure. Well, a lot of our marketing early on is like, you know, Crystal City, it's very functional, it's very safe. Why would you go there without an appointment? You know, um, <laughs> you can get in, you can't get out, you know, just not. But but to the people that live there and work there, it was right. the best kept secret, yeah. right? And they sort of enjoyed it that way. You know, but when you look at the loss of, you know, more than half of your jobs, 
right. you know, you have to respond to that with something different, and that's what the bid so is all about. What got you to the bid? So, um, you know, I was recruited to okay. it. Um, I had met one of the property owners through something entirely different related to an arts um, venture. I was the chair of a theater board downtown while we raised a lot of money and built that new theater. Mm -hmm. And through that, I knew one of the property owners, and he came to me and he said, you know, Angie, we're forming a bid in Crystal City. I'm sure you're not really interested in that. I actually, And I was like, actually, I am interested in that. <laughs> Um, not just because you know I'd, I really was into the whole bid concept, but the thought of transforming a neighborhood that was near and dear right. to my heart. And when you know I'd say I'm going to go transform Crystal City, and people would look at me like, why on earth would you want to do that? And um, that was almost eight years ago. I was the first employee, okay. and you know now everyone says, you know, Crystal City, it's so different. It's such an interesting place. There's so much going on, and you know that's what we do on any given day. And I love the fact that I am. Um, have helped sort of be part of that, you know, transformational story for a neighborhood that, you know, sort of kind of meant a lot to me just coming up here from college. So did you, uh, you like to solve problems? I do. That's, that's that the engineer in me. I was going to say, that's the engineer in me. Yeah, that's yeah. the engineer in me. So when I was at um, Verizon, uh, basically I had a mentor who would sort of drag me from place to place mm -hmm. and say, you know, here, solve this, fix this. And it might be, you know, launching a new product or transforming sort of the billing process or um, in one case it was actually launching Verizon's internet offering. Okay. You know, so I like to say, you know, to be able to do that inside a massive company, yeah. which has sort of old ways of doing things and old thought processes, and you know, and here you come in and you're like, well, let's think about this a little differently. You know, that's exactly what I do every day in Crystal City. I also like to say at Bell Verizon that I learned to turn elephants in closets. <laughs> <laughs> so in changing Crystal City, I mean, it's it's constant problem solving, strategic thinking differently, and sort of seeing the neighborhood as other people may not see it. And did you find, when you got there and started working on this, that because there was this sudden brack, the sudden change, very big change, that no one really maybe had foreseen, but that you found maybe people were willing to think about things in new ways? Because they had to. Well, I think what's interesting, um, because the primary property owner had sold to a different company, okay. there was certainly some shift in thinking. Um, but there, I mean, we, we sort of had a window to kind of jump yeah. in and I think one of my um, uh, things that I like to do is if I'm going to go into something, I want to send a message that, you know, we're here and we're, it's going to be something to watch. And so our first big event in Crystal City was we did Artomatic, which basically brought right. more than a thousand, thousand artists into a vacant space and just turned this um, what was a former patent and trade office series of buildings. And if you think about the creativity associated with PETO, and right. then you move it to now it's the creativity associated with a thousand different artists in these same offices. I thought that was a very interesting sort of okay. parallel. Um, and we brought more than 32,000 people into Crystal City in that six week period of time. And, you know, Artomatic had never been out of the District of Columbia. They'd never been in an office building like this, but they'd also never been in a neighborhood that actually had amenities where the artists loved it and the guests loved it, you know, and people started to say, wow, Crystal City is different than what I remember, you know, and so that we sort of showcased, not that, you know, Crystal City didn't have things people could do, but that people just weren't aware. Right. And through that momentum, you know, we've, you know, people have watched that now Crystal City is, you know, this sort of bustling, vibrant place. It's a great place to live, work, play, and stay. I think you still have people who say, oh, that underground, but they don't need it any. I mean, you don't. You can do plenty of things in Crystal City without ever even knowing the underground is there. Well, and the beauty of the underground. Well, so first of all, we say, you know, if we're dispelling this, the underground technically isn't. If you think about the green roof, the underground is actually your oh, original right. green roof because it's right. at grade, and then the stuff on top of it's built up, and there there are oh, parks right. on top, yeah. so there is built-in, you know, green aspects of it. Yeah. Um, but the, if the way we think of the underground area, if you will, is sort of as transit extension. Uh -huh. On rainy, cold days, you can pretty much get around, and you don't have to go outside, which is nice. Right. Um, but the other aspect of that is, you know, people, you know, want their retail ease to be on the on the street. Even malls now are sort of turning inside out, right? They are, yeah. So it's a similar concept in Crystal City. However, we've done some, you know, because you have these hallways that are great access to transit that makes transit even more robust, if you will, because you can get to it from more places. Um, we've started turning some of those available retail spaces into art studios and art galleries. 
So right. that, you know, underground might have a negative connotation. Art underground doesn't. Right. So this whole sort of lean into it, it doesn't hurt as much as something that we are, we've are uh, we honed quite well in Crystal City. No, that's very good. That's a good point. All right, so what are some of the initiatives or programs? So on? we have, um, you know, we have five key program areas. Um, four that were sort of from the beginning and then one that we've recently added, which um, we needed the other four, I think, to be in place to add this next one. So, but we basically say Crystal City is active. It's artful, accessible, and green. On the active side, you know, we're the bid that on Monday mornings we have free yoga um, at 7 a.m. On Wednesdays we have free Zumba. On Thursdays we have a street hockey league. Every Friday in April at 6.30 p.m. we host a 5K on the streets of right. Crystal City. So anything that really sort of promotes sort of this physical place because, you know, people want access to things like that. Um, it is artful. You know, we have a whole series of art events. You know, we have um, what we call Sip Your Way Through September so that every Friday we have wine in the water park, which is like live music and just a really nice outdoor scene. We have something called Sip and Salsa, which are tastings of, of Spanish and Latin American wines and then a lot of salsa dancing. We have Pups and Pilsners, which is, you know, everyone loves their dogs. And we have, you know, art, art, art brews. So that the whole series of, of sort of wine oriented, which we consider artful events. Um, we turned an old um, conference center into a temporary home for arena stage and then a permanent home for synthetic theater. Right. Um, I've mentioned the art underground already, um, but just sort of taking available retail and turning it into artist studios, sort of like a t torpedo factory like model, again, something for people to see. And then, you know, one of the things that people used to say, you know, about Crystal City is a concrete canyon. But we've turned that concrete into canvas and we've mounted local artist work and sort of hung it right. all over so that now the outsides of Crystal City, it's not um, a canyon of concrete, it is um, a walking, thriving, colorful gallery. So right. that's the artful side. Accessible, um, you know, we, we're planes, trains, and automobiles. We have Metro, we're just about to, we just had a groundbreaking for the new transit way, which right. will pave the way for the new streetcar, which we're very excited about. Um, we have the VRE, the Virginia Rail Express, both the Manassas and Fredericksburg lines. Um, we're the bid that partnered with the, with the county to launch bike share. So the reason you have a regional bike share solution is because of us right. investing in that. Um, and then we've got obviously the great um, bike paths, wonderful parking. I mean, you know, you, everyone you still loves their cars. You know, we've got every major transit ro route coming through there, and so great parking to accommodate that. And then, of course, National Airport, which right. we love. Right. What I really like is you've not just done created this space for art, but you've created the events about art. So it's right. been this, right. both sides of it, because sure. both are important. Sure, um, and, and we can talk a little bit more about that in just a second as well, because I, um, you know, the whole arts piece, if you're looking at really giving a, a soul to a neighborhood, I mean, that's really the piece of it that is um, something that every community needs um, access to. You know, great, right. either the opportunity for the arts or the experience of it with the visual arts or the great events that we have as well. Um, the last piece of accessible right. is um, Wi-Fi. So we put oh, free right. Wi-Fi because transport is also another means of accessible. And then the last piece is green, right? So we have, um, we launch street recycling, a farmer's market, world-class producer only. Um, once a year we recycle electronics for free and do a community shred. Um, so that any, and then all of, of course, the cycling programs, you know, really it's about, you know, a neighborhood that is, um, you know, has a, has a great uh, focus on the environment. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece, which is our new program area, is innovative. So we're active, artful, accessible, green, and also innovative. And this gets to sort of a, a tech hub. Um, right. I mean, I, I mentioned that I'm an electrical engineer, and when I first um, came up here, I was with Verizon. I later went to a small internet company that was housed in a Reston incubator, a tech incubator, um, which sounds really interesting to put a bunch of tech companies together, but you're in Reston. So there was absolutely nothing to walk to, you know, and so you had to drive to get there. Right. Now, granted, they've just come through with the Silver Line, right. and so there's some things that are changing there. But, you know, the, the tech community is all about, you know, creativity and coming together. And so um, we've really jumped into this market in a big way, led by one of our um, biggest stakeholders, which is Vornado, so that we have something called Tech Shop, which is a place, it's a maker space, a 21,000 square foot, you know, anything from a sewing machine to a 61,000 PSI saw that you can cut through five inches of titanium. You join it like a gym, so if you have an idea, you can make it. 
Um, we have something called the Crystal Tech Fund, which is a $50 million fund um, to seed uh, stage two companies. Um, so you can make it, you can potentially get it funded, and then of course in Crystal City we have plenty of office space. Right. We also host events on a regular basis, sort of with the tech community. Um, and then we're um, rolling out something called WeWork Residential. This was just approved. So it's basically small unit housing, um, so almost community housing for sort of that focus on the tech industry. Um, and the burgeoning creativity. And, and the beauty of Crystal City, we've got the airport right there again, so it's easy in and out for companies. You're right there next to the capital in terms of lobbying and any sort of resources and the work that you need to do there. But it's also a really cute, cool community that's got all these neat things so that you know I can work on my small startup all week long and then I can run a 5K on Friday. Right. I can do a great event on Sunday. There's plenty of housing. It all works really nicely together. And. Um I was going to ask a question about the uh, the makerspace. So, how long has it ha have had the makerspace? So, we launched um, Tech Shop in April of okay. this year. Because I've heard not just recently, but I've been hearing people, different people around Arlington, hear about the idea, an idea like that, and think we need something like that. And it's so, amazing, yeah. actually. I mean, yeah. it is a stunning space, um, a really neat space that you want to hang out in. Um, but also, it has access to all the all of the equipment and. Considering Crystal City also has a huge apartment slash condo population, right. you don't have your own workshop. Right. But now you, you do yeah. have your own workshop. Right. So. so how, what's your sense now of how BRAC is playing out? So um, it's interesting. I often say that um, I'm the Lorax. Okay. So on one side, I can tell you how amazing Crystal City is and how we've got all these awesome amenities and these new things and there's vibrance and people are coming for the events and the restaurants and the experience and sort of there's a ticking away at the vacancy. Right. But there's also the other side of it, which says we still have huge vacancy, you know, right. between sequestration and BRAC, you know, there aren't, you know, companies aren't moving in in a big way. The government's decisions are actually pulling and shrinking and moving things elsewhere anyway. We're still by the Pentagon, so you're always going to have some DOD right. um, agencies and contractors there, um, but it is a tough time. It's right. a really tough time, and when, um, you know, companies are looking at competitive areas, you know, they're focused on things like signage and the building process and permits and how long it takes and you know these are things you know and and transit and what's the community like in terms of supporting growth and new ideas and new architecture and this is where you know Arlington finds itself with a little bit of you know split personality right. you've got groups like us that are saying you know this is Crystal City this is where you need to have your business and we're going to do everything we can to sort of facilitate you through the process because we need your business here right. because your business here means you know lower taxes for us as residents and a you know just a really thriving robust community because you need those workers there to eat in your restaurants during the day so that the restaurants are there when we want to go at night right and then you have the other side of it, which says, no, I don't want it here, I don't want any change, I don't want this, you know, and, and just a lot of misinformation that happens, right. so. But my, uh, I, I probably should know more about this because I'm an economist, but it seems to me that things like the maker space don't just attract the people that engage in it, but they create an environment that is attractive to even larger companies that aren't really going to have anything to do with the maker space. Certainly that is They're the going to see this as an area where this renovation happens, yes. where, you know, yes. and the yeah. arts, further that creativity. Absolutely. Um, the beauty of having Tech Shop is you've got all of the equipment on one side and then you can look through and you can uh, through and see on the other side of the hallway artist studios. Right? right. So it's all right there together. You right. know, we're lumping it into this is a creative, innovative space. And yes, there are companies that are interested or that, you know, they have a um, a high um, percentage of engineers and right. maybe the engineers, you know, don't want to do that or, or that's not necessarily part of their job, but right. that's something they want to do at night. They want to go, they want right. to tinker, they want to play, they have an idea, they want to build their own company, you know, so they've kind of got, you know, and really the, the point now is, you know, you want to locate your company where the people are. So obviously bringing in tech right. shop and these other things is, is designed to help, you know, whittle that away or take away some of the barriers, but there's still challenges in terms of a big company and, you know, well, wait a minute, I want to be able to put a big sign up and down my building that says right. I'm here. You know, and then you've got, not necessarily, in Crystal City, the beauty is you've got commercial buildings that don't necessarily have residents around them, but then neighborhoods come out in force to say, no, no signs, you know, because it's almost like we want to stop it there because we're afraid it's going right. to come into our neighborhood. So you see definitely that tension. I think Arlington's working its way through that, right. um, but but it's a, it's a really important time because you've got some other neighborhoods in the district that are just as aggressive as we are 
and if you know we don't continue to pay attention, you know, it's it's going to shift, and that's not what we want for right. you know as a mom of a small kid, and you know going into middle school in Arlington, you know, I want this to be the community he wants to be in for the long term. That's a good point. Do you think you're able to get the word out to businesses? So they, Do you think that um, works. You know, I think uh, we've certainly, Arlington Economic Development's very focused on getting mm -hmm. the word out. Um, our property owners are focused on getting the word out, and certainly we are as a bit as well. Um, I, I spend a lot of time uh, with the press, you know, doing tours, doing company mm -hmm. tours, you know, um, promoting our events, writing press releases, you know, talking, tweeting, social media, just about anything that we can use to get the word out. And I think. Um, Certainly, far and wide, people hear about Crystal City a lot more than they used to, and we're right. very strategic about how we market, so I think that's been very effective. Right. You can always do more. You can always do more, <laughs> and, and that's what the, the irony is, it's somehow with social media and everything, it's easier to get it out, but it's easier for everybody else. Well, it's easier to get so it out, it's also easier better. to tune out. It's like yes. where do I pay? You know, what do I pay attention to? Because I'm getting washed over with it so much. So we we look for the sources that people are actually really paying attention to, and that's where we focus. Right. So I also think we have a lot of very interesting things going on that people like to right. write about, so that certainly helps. All right, so we're sitting here in August. What's what's the big thing for the fall? So, um, you know, September is a big month for us. We kick it off every Friday. We have something called Wine in the Water Park, which okay. is live music and just a very relaxing setting, you know, to sit and sort of sip and listen to music and maybe do picnic. Um, and then we have uh, the Pups and Pilsners event that I mentioned. Right. We have the sip, your, um, this, uh, the sip and Salsa that I mentioned as well. And then we continue to have, you know, Monday morning, 7 a.m. free yoga. Monday right. nights we have movies. Um, Tuesdays we have a farmer's market. Wednesdays we have an art market. Um, we also in the evenings have something called Blues and Brews, which is live music, live blues, and um, artists and beers. Thursdays we have um, a food truck uh, food truck event every Thursday at lunchtime, and yeah. then in the evenings we have street hockey, and then Fridays I mentioned the wine and the water park, and that's kind of ongoing through the season for us. So it's right. it's you know a very busy time in Crystal City. And that's Arlington as a whole has had a uh, I don't know what the right word is um, an uncertain relationship with food trucks. They haven't really exploded here. So, so it's, it's probably good to have a Thursday night event. And right. Well, it so in. it's very interesting for us because you know when we. Um, you know, our approach again is problem solvers. You know, we had trucks that were showing up on Crystal Drive because you know there was a there's a lunch business there. Yeah. But again, with BRAC, you know, our office population is down, so you had them parking on the streets in front of the restaurants. So it was it was um, less enticing to eat outside uh, if you're like in sitting at one of the restaurants that actually is brick and mortar um, because of the queuing and the noise and the right, smells. Right. Um, yet, you know, so you had the retailers that were very unhappy about that and the whole parking legislation. Um, but the tenants love food trucks because they right. want variety, they want something different. So basically what we did is we have a, um, a surface lot and we uh, went to the property owner and said we'd like to use this and we talked to the food trucks and we said, you know, if you'll agree to um, only come to Crystal City on Thursdays, we'll give you this lot to use for free and we'll create a van out of it. Yeah. Um, and they do, and they love it. And the restaurants, you know, the rest of the days of the week, they don't have it there. But it also just brings more people out right. um, because some people are going to eat at food trucks, some people aren't. Right. You know, so that it offers a, um, it. Create it's a creative solution. Um, we're not an enforcement organization. We're not going to say you can't park there. We're not, you know we're we're really trying to focus right. on, you know, how do you look at this a little differently so you can create a win-win for everybody. Right. No, that's true. That's a good story. Angela, thank you very much for coming in. It's a pleasure. It's been a very interesting discussion. You. We'll have to have you back and talk about issues as things happen. Sure. And, and certainly the whole BRAC is a long-term uh, issue for Arlington. It's an important issue. Right. So everyone coming in? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I also want to thank our volunteer crew here at Arlington Independent Media. We've had Daria Baguna on camera. We've had Janessa Jackson on camera, Hilary Freer, and Steve Cordell and Booth. But most of all, I want to thank Angela for working so hard and, and so absolutely. often for uh, to make her city a better place to live. Thank you. And work. Pleasure.